Now we're going to show the equivalence of Bragg and von Lau diffraction conditions. Uh, suppose that the incident and scattered wave vectors will satisfy the von Lau condition, that was the change in the k vector is equal to a reciprocal lattice vector g. And we have elastic scattering, remember, so we have k and k prime uh, magnitudes to be the same because we have elastic scattering. Okay, so uh, let's see how this works. So we have the incident k vector that is at an angle theta with respect to uh, a plane and k prime is uh, specularly reflected from this plane at the angle theta. So if I look at uh, k prime minus k g, that's the uh, reciprocal lattice vector. And remember that uh, we have um, basically the projection of k or k prime onto this reciprocal lattice vector should be equal to g over 2. So we have these two uh, equal. So it's the uh, perpendicular bisector is a plane that we call the uh, Bragg plane. Okay, so k prime minus k is in a g hat direction, a unit vector in the direction of the g vector, g g hat. So if I dot, take the dot product of this equation with g hat, I get k prime dot g hat minus k dot g hat is equal to g. And k prime dot g hat, uh, so if you look at the figure, you can see that k prime dot g hat is equal to g over 2. And k dot g hat must be equal to minus g over 2. So that's exactly what we find here. So the angle theta that k and k prime make with a plane perpendicular to g must be equal. Uh, <clears throat> so because they satisfy the von Lau diffraction condition, their projections onto the reciprocal lattice vector g must be equal to g over 2. Now I note that uh, g is an integer multiple of the shortest reciprocal lattice vector g0. So in general, there is a shortest reciprocal lattice vector that goes between two consecutive uh, reciprocal lattice points that are nearest. And the g vector is basically parallel to this g0 vector. And we know that the distance between HKL planes is 2 pi divided by g0. So this is for the nearest planes uh, that are perpendicular to a GHKL reciprocal lattice vector. Okay, so we can write <coughs> the magnitude of our reciprocal lattice vector g as an integer multiple of uh, the shortest reciprocal lattice, vec uh, lattice uh, vector magnitude g0. So we can write g as 2 pi n divided by the distance between the two planes, <coughs> hkl, nearest hkl planes. On the other hand, we note that uh, g over 2 was equal to um, k prime dot g hat. So we have uh, g is equal to 2k sine theta. So 2k sine theta must be equal to 2 pi n divided by dhkl. And uh, for k, we substitute 2 pi over lambda. So 2 times 2 pi over lambda sine theta is equal to 2 pi times an integer divided by the distance between two parallel planes hkl. So that gives us 2d sine theta equals n lambda, which is the Bragg law. So we have shown that starting from uh, the von Lau condition, uh, we arrive at the Bragg law. So the, uh, the von Lau diffraction condition and Bragg diffraction conditions are equivalent. So we can summarize this result as follows. A Lau diffraction peak corresponding to a change in wave vector delta k, which is given by a reciprocal lattice vector g, corresponds to a Bragg reflection from the family of direct planes that are planes in the direct lattice perpendicular to this reciprocal lattice vector. And the order of the interference, the order n of the Bragg reflection, is just uh, basically the magnitude of the reciprocal lattice vector divided by the shortest reciprocal lattice vector, g0. Okay, and now there is a nice uh, geometrical construction that's called the Ewald construction uh, to visualize the diffraction in the reciprocal lattice. 
So here is our reciprocal lattice. We're demonstrating this for a square a reciprocal lattice. The distance between two reciprocal lattice points is 2 pi over a. So what we do is we draw the k vector in the direction of the incident beam such that its tip ends at a reciprocal lattice point. So this is our uh, k vector here. Uh, and we rotate our reciprocal lattice so that its tip hits the reciprocal lattice point and then we draw a circle around this origin um, basically it has a radius that's equal to 2 pi over lambda because we are assuming uh, elastic scattering k prime will have the same magnitude so what we check is uh, because this represents this circle represents all possible directions k prime might have what we check is if the k prime is going to intersect another reciprocal lattice point if it does then because we will have k the tip of k touching a reciprocal lattice point and the tip of k prime touching another lattice a reciprocal lattice point delta k will be equal to a reciprocal lattice vector and constructive interference will occur so the Ewald construction is a geometrical method to check for the diffraction